Shove it, man! Hello everyone, it's the Hawk, and Ring of the Hawk is back. It's season five, baby. Oh, hell yeah, man! For those of you who don't know, Ring of the Hawk is the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company, and at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. I'm going to kick off this whole new season with a video I've been wanting to make for a while, but I didn't because it was too short. But it's definitely interesting, and for that reason I've gone out of my way to not watch any of these matches until today. Alright, it's Frankie. Was he the future of the WWE Kazarian? Will he tear it up like a barbarian? This run is actually so short, I've included two matches that I wouldn't normally include for Ring of the Hawk as they aren't on important shows. The quality of these two recordings are going to be horrible because it's not as if the network has decided to remaster WWFD shows from 2001. But anyway, here's two short bonus matches to start us off, because this is a short run. Match 1, WWF Jacked Tag Match. The ultimate evil foreigner heel team of Kai and Ty cut a dubbed promo threatening their opponents for being jobbers who are just trying to make a name for themselves. And they are, of course, Frankie the Future Kazarian and Ryan Sakoda. Kaz quickly hits a springboard back elbow, which has little effect, but it is a move that we would associate with Kaz. Taka makes a blind tag, but he soon regrets it as Kaz ducks and Funaki smashes into him. Kaz drop kicks Funaki out of the ring and brings Taka into the ring the hard way. He makes the tag to Sakoda. It doesn't go well for him. I didn't realise that this guy passed away in 2021. He actually ended up having a better WWF career than his partner Kaz. He was a henchman for Tajiri. Even that's better than the mould from the TNA locker room. Anyway, Kaz is back in after a while, but it's not the most successful hot tag in the world. He almost gets a Mishinoku driver, which is broken up by Sakoda. Funaki gets rid of him, and then Taka just hits the Mishinoku driver. It's over. It's not the most impressive match ever. I actually expected a little bit more. It was very basic. It's a D. Match 2, Jacked. Tag match. The Holly Cousins, Hardcore and Crash versus Frankie Kazarian and Mikey Henderson. Being a jobber against Hardcore Holly is always a scary proposition. Hardcore quickly aggressively hip tosses Kaz and clotheslines him out the ring. Hardcore hits some hard chops on the outside, which makes Kaz dump in his nappy of fear. Back in the ring, Hardcore hits a delayed vertical suplex. Crash makes a tag and hits a diving crossbody for a two. Kazarian grabs his eyelash and tags out. But after a bit, Kaz takes a cheap shot from the outside and he soon pays for it. Henderson does get to tag him back in and together they hit a double team Northern Light suplex. It's just a two. Kaz applies a submission for a bit before Crash fights out of it, only to get hit of a spinning heel kick. He tags out, but only for a brief time, and he has to come back in against Hardcore Holly. Hardcore hits a couple of clotheslines and a drop kick, which gets a huge pop from the crowd. He smiles with happiness as he boots Kaz away. It's over when Hardcore reverses a move and hits the Alabama Slam for the free. Actually, slightly better than the last match. He took a hell of a beating, but it was fun. He was never going to do much in these squash matches. It's another D. So after this, Kaz briefly toured Japan, and he also toured with the terrible World Wrestling All-Stars. After this, an upstart TNA began, and they started hoovering up any talents worth a damn. Kaz would be one of those talents, arriving in 2003. He was just seen as a cruiserweight by TNA, but he was rated pretty highly, and he won the X Division title. He stuck with TNA for a couple of years before his contract with TNA expired, and they had a chance at the WWE. They just kind of signed him out of the blue, and then frustratingly left him sat at home for months on end. Kaz had been signed to the WWE on the promise that they were revamping their cruiserweight division. Kaz was told before he could go on to the main show, he needed a gimmick. Eventually, the geniuses at the WWE decided that he would be... Get this. Frankie the Future Kazarian. A gimmick he had already been using for years. But at least he would finally get his call up to Velocity. And that's where he'd stay. I guess it's better than nothing. His Velocity run starts with a long interview declaring that he will be the future of the WWE. It seems he's going to be an arrogant hill. Well, bro, my thoughts are things have to change around here. We need something new. We need the future of wrestling to take over. And the future is now. Match 3, Nunzio versus Frankie the Future Kazarian. Nunzio quickly takes him down for waist lock. Kaz hits a cheap shot elbow in the corner and an arm drag. He celebrates with happiness and pays for it with a drop kick. Nunzio arm drags him out of the ring, where literally nothing happens and they come back to the ring. Nunzio aggressively works on Kaz's leg and floors him. Then he changes his mind and starts working on his arm instead. Kaz's turtle wheel slam is reversed into an arm bar. Kaz quickly rolls away from that. He dodges an attack in the corner and cuts Nunzio across the ropes. Kaz comes back into the ring for a slingshot leg drop for a two. He's not put off by that two count and sends Nunzio into the corner and hits a drop kick. As he makes a cover, the crowd are starting to boo him. Nunzio manages to sneak him into a small cradle pin for a two. Kaz closes him down again with a nice drop kick. He can't take advantage and gets a net breaker for a double down. Back on their feet, Kaz misses a bunch of wild punches. He gets a back body drop and a side slam for a two count. 
Something new now as Nunzio springs off the ropes with an arm breaker for a two. Then out of nowhere Kaz hits a twisting fisherman suplex and that's the three. He quickly grabs a microphone and says that's why he is the future and the future looks good. His music sounds like something from an African documentary. A fun match. He didn't really do that much. I guess the promo work before and after the match was unexpectedly good and well delivered. The whole thing is a B. The funny promos keep on coming as Kaz is in disbelief that Scotty Too Hotty is still wrestling in 2005. With Scotty Too Hotty. Scotty Too Hotty. I'm wrestling Scotty Too Hotty. Yeah, that's right. The guy with the goofy outfits and the worm. He's still wrestling. Yeah, he's still wrestling. Dude, I used to watch him like eight years ago. It's time to change things up around here. It's time for the future. He'd probably dump in his nappy of horror if he realised that Scotty is literally still wrestling around the world to this day. I'm enjoying Kaz's character work. Match 4, Scotty Too Hotty vs Frankie Kazarian. Kaz takes him down quickly and celebrates like he just won a gold medal with a freaking broken neck. I wish he'd looked at Scotty in disbelief to see he was still wrestling, that would have been funny. Kaz boots him hard in the gut. Scotty finally makes a comeback with some hip tosses and Kaz is launched out the ring like the hawk soaring through the sky. Kaz cuts Scotty's arm across the ropes and returns to the ring with a weak pump kick. Kaz hits a drop kick in the corner now and kips back up. This guy's full of himself. Nice hammerlock slam from Kaz now, but he misses his diving leg drop. Scotty fights back to his feet and reverses a back suplex to hit one of his own. The master of the worm hits a big diving forearm and a back body drop. He starts gorming out, so Kaz pulls off his eyelash and launches Scotty's arm into the ring pole. Kaz wins with, I don't know, a hammerlock DDT I guess? It was hard to tell what that one was meant to be. If it was a hammerlock DDT, that would make sense, as Kaz was working his arm before this. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Kaz's character work is the highlight and not the in-ring stuff. Crowd are all over him, though, in the post-match promo. It wasn't the greatest match ever, but it was alright for what it was. It's a C. Match 5, Funaki vs Frankie the Future Kazarian. Good to see Kaz with an opportunity to seek revenge for his 2001 loss to Kai and Tai. Kaz hits a shoulder tackle, but quickly has his legs swept out. Funaki have a couple more arm drags before Kaz grabs an eyelash but he still can't do anything as Funaki reverses another arm drag into one of his own. Nice move now as Kaz dodges a corner attack to hit an edgematic with authority. This is strange, Kaz with a cravat into knee strikes into a reverse net breaker, somehow just the two. Kaz gets Funaki's arm tied up and yanks him down, he can't make him tap though. By the way, I only said weird earlier because these are not moves you would normally associate with Kaz. Now he hits a float over into a swinging net breaker. Kaz bumps him in the corner and hits the falling drop kick for another two. Funaki hasn't done anything for a while, but now he connects with an Integuri for the double down. On their feet, Funaki hits a bulldog for a two count. Kung Funaki starts hawking up and he hits a drop kick and a crossbody for a two count. He keeps going and attempts the tornado DDT, which Kaz reverses, but he can't reverse the fisherman suplex, just a two. Funaki's going nuts, but he can't do anything and Kaz folds him in half like an accordion with a back suplex. There's the wave of the future from Kaz, and that's the three. While this match was a lot of fun and it's impressive to see Kaz wrestling a completely different style. Other than the finish, you wouldn't really recognise anything that Kaz did here. Kaz once again declares that he is the future. Love this match, it's a B. Match 6, final match. Oh, well that sucks. Paul London. <laughs> he almost slides out Candice Michelle on his entrance versus Frankie Kazarian. This one should be good. This is two guys who did some great stuff in the Asylum era of TNA. London with a first takedown with an arm drag. The commentary match acknowledged that these two have competed in the past on the indies. London really seems to have the upper hand here. Kaz tries to grab his arm, but London slips out of it on the ropes. Kaz says, shut up or I'll smack you one. London goes running again and flies back into the ring for a double stomp to the back. He tries to finish Kaz when out of nowhere, Kaz throws him overhead for suplex into the corner. Kaz suplexes him again for another two. London is struggling now and he escapes a submission, but ends up on Kaz's shoulders. Kaz doesn't disappoint here and hits the back to the future for a two. The comedy team are impressed with that one. Kaz tries another net breaker which London is able to escape by running up the ropes. He quickly drop kicks Kaz for the double down. Back on their feet and London hits a boot to the head and the running spinning heel kick. Kaz is dazed. London hits a trouble in paradise kick for a two. Good match here. London drops Kaz on his face, boots him in the gut and hits a standing shooting star for a two. Kaz gets desperate now and attempts the back to the future again. London tries to reverse that into a pin, but Kaz simply sits on him for the three. 
Another really fun match. Surprisingly, none of that was really high flying. It was more technical than anything. The final match is another B. Game over. So this is where it gets a bit weird now. Vince McMahon had reportedly been a fan of Kaz, but after one of Kaz's match, he asked Kaz to shave off his haircut. Kaz did not want to do this as he felt it would make him look cookie cutter like everybody else. He looks back at this as being immature, and at the time, he said he asked for his release as he felt that WWE had no plans for the cruiserweight division. Based on what I saw, that excuse feels sort of flimsy. I actually think WWE are putting a bit behind him. He got mic time, his matches were long enough to make an impression, and he went undefeated. He didn't have much to moan about. He was a pretty unknown guy at the time. What was he expecting? So ultimately, Kaz was just a stubborn young guy, and I think he blew a massive chance because he was doing pretty well, and it wasn't bland in the slightest. He actually seemed like a good fit in that company. TNA took him back in 2006, where he stayed for roughly another eight years. But when he arrived back in TNA, it was noticeable that he had shaved off his hair. So I guess Kazarian had a change of heart and he wanted to get back in the WWE's good graces. But it was too little too late and he'd never go back there again. Alright, we've got to shove our very first competitor for Ring of the Hawk Season 5 a grade on the Shove It Show. What do you all think of that? I found that pretty enjoyable. It was just too short to be a brilliant final grade. Is a C fair? Let me know down below. I want to know who you want to see next on the Shove It Show to help the channel grow. And if you don't agree with that, I'll deliver a fatal blow.